Hello, this is Watch All About with another watch review and in this review we're looking at the very latest offering by this brand called Aldaz. I reviewed a couple of their watches before, Bronzematic and Gallant, both have been very well built for the money with pretty impressive specs. So does the Octomarine uh, follow suit? Well, let's open it up and have a look at what can be found within this pretty neat and pretty handy travel case that it comes in. And here we have the watch in question. So got some nice big fat padding there. Uh, this watch comes slipped into this extra bit of foam, which is pretty handy. What else do we have within here? So I've got my spare links in. So I've taken four out for my about seven inch wrist. And we've got a warranty card, which looks pretty good. And just a very, very brief uh, instructions on the movement. So pretty handy that it comes in this neat little travel packet. Uh, I much prefer them to a box. So here we have the watch itself. So this watch comes in with a RRP of $425. Now I have a 30% off code, WIAA30. That makes it really, really impressive, $297.50 or around £230. Now, when we look into the watch uh, and see the build quality, the specs, it is a lot of watch for the money. I'm not going to lie. You know, I might as well just say that straight off the bat. Uh, I have been pretty impressed with it. I'm not going to, you know, not going to beat it around the bush. For that price, this is a hell of a lot of watch for the money. So. Let's uh, go through the specs then. Starting off with the size then. Now I'm not gonna lie, it is a chunky boy. So I've got about seven inch wrist for reference. It's 42 mil diameter, uh, 51 mil lug to lug length with a pretty chunky 16 mil height. Uh, now the height is something that comes with the territory of the pretty, pretty mammoth water resistance rating of 500 meters or 50 atmospheres. Now for a watch costing 230 quid, that is impressive. And um, that obviously has a lot to say with the height. It's got a cheeky little helium release valve on the end, on the side there, as you can see. Uh, but it's just an absolute tank of a watch. The weight is 205 grams with my four links removed as well. So it is a big, heavy, chunky, watch. Some people will hate that. Some people will absolutely love that. Now I'm on the side where I do like big chunky watches. Um, so I think it's really, really impressive construction and build quality and weight. The amount of steel you're getting for this price is very impressive indeed. Lug width is 22 mil and you get a two year warranty as well. The movement found within it is the Seiko NH35. That's coming in at about plus 11.4 seconds a day, which is just about acceptable. I probably would have preferred it to be a little bit more accurate straight out of the, um, uh, straight out of the box. However, you know, if it's around 10 seconds a day, it's not too bad. I think that's, that's acceptable, especially considering the price. So that's the specs discussed. Let's go through it aspect by aspect. Starting off with the case then. So the wearability of it is probably quite limited purely because of the sheer chunkiness of it. The height of 16 millimeters does mean that it's unlikely that you'll ever want to wear this uh, watch with a suit or underneath a uh, cuff because chances are you won't actually be able to fit it under a cuff. Um, and also just the general style of it probably won't necessarily fit into that kind of um, situation anyway. This is a definite tool watch uh, which needs to be worn and used and abused basically in a very active uh, situation. Uh, the case is fully brushed as well, so that obviously helps uh, the fact that it has this tool watch feel to it. Um, and it's also a lot better in terms of longevity as well because it's less likely to scratch if it's already a brushed finish, so that's good. It is a chunky beast, no doubt about it. And it's actually reasonably comfortable, however. Uh, that's aided by the fact that the bracelet is very uh, nice and easy to wear, but we'll touch on the bracelet uh, in a little bit. So the water resistance rating, as I mentioned, 500 meters, so impressive for a watch costing this much. In fact, I can't think really of many watches in this price range which offer the same uh, amount of water resistance. Uh, and a nice little touch, the helium release valve located at nine. Now I've, I obviously haven't gone down far enough underwater uh, to be able to actually test if this uh, genuinely works, but you know, you would, you would 
assume it does, being that it's a key selling point of the watch and they're not going to just bung any old fake helium release valve in it. So again, really impressive that it's, this is included on a watch costing uh, this much. I do like the fact that it splits up the design of the case as well, because in actual fact, the case is very, very, you know, plain kind of uh, flat sided barrel. So it does keep things a little bit interesting on that side. And then on this side, we obviously have a very impressive, big, chunky uh, crown to match the rest of the uh, the case. So the crown also has this very uh, nice rubberized grip as well, makes it so easy to use. It is on the large side, I'm not gonna lie, you know, perhaps that could be a little bit uh, more condensed, a little bit not quite protrudy as it is, but it's so easy to use because of this really impressive grip. And I do like the way it has the Aldaz logo um, engraved on the end or embossed against this frosted backdrop as well. Really easy to use, like tremendously easy, which is great because it is, like I say, a big fat tool watch. Uh, flipping it over, uh, we have this uh, really impressive deep stamped octopus motif in the center with some various bits of information surrounding uh, the outside engraved. This is magnificent for the, for the price. You know, this is the same kind of quality on watches you'd that would cost four or five times more, you know, thousands of pounds we're talking about here. This is so detailed and impressive. Yes, it's the kind of thing that you won't know or notice unless you actually take the watch off, but it's, it's cool that they've put this attention to detail on something out of sight. Uh, and again, it's just really well made and such high quality. Uh, flat sapphire crystal on top as well. It does have a layer of anti-reflective coating, so you get a really nice clear view of the uh, the watch. Uh, so that's, that always makes a big difference to me as well, uh, how a, a watch looks. So that's good. Uh, finally then, the bezel. So it's 120 click, unidirectional. I don't know if you can hear that. Provides a really nice, satisfying click. So it's a uh, two-tone, as you can see, black and blue. Uh, reminiscent of the Rolex GMT Master 2, which is a you know solid nod to a classic watch. Uh, it has this notch edging that they describe, and again, that means the grip is really good, really easy to use as well. They've really thought of a lot of things. This is a tool watch, and it is meant to be used, and the uh, the bezel and the, the crown grip does mean that it is easy to use, which is good. Um, so no complaints there. Uh, the ceramic insert, very nice and polished as well. As you can see, it catches the not, um, catches the light really nicely. And uh, these, inf these uh, markings are all uh, filled in with loom. The loom itself is very strong, let me tell you. Uh, but we will mention, we'll move on to that uh, as we talk about the dial. So moving on to the dial then, uh, we might as well you know, talk about the loom to begin with. It's Swiss Super Luminova and it is really, really strong. Uh, plentiful applied as well. Uh, they, they haven't spared any loom at all. They've slapped it all in there. So as you can see, the uh, markings on the bezel insert are all filled with loom. And then we have our big fat chunky hour markers and our bold hands as well. Legibility is certainly not an issue with it. It is really, really bold, simple, easy to read and it's perfect for the purpose of this watch. Um, the loom is easy, quick to charge. You know, it's the kind of strength where you just notice it in broad daylight, it's that strong. Um, after it's just been charging for a short while, you can see if you go into somewhere slightly darker, you can see it growing brightly. And again, for a watch costing this much, wow, brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I really love that about uh, what they've done with this. The dial itself has a black sunburst backdrop, which is really, really subtle, uh, which is really nice as well, because you, you notice it, the way it slightly reflects the light in a different way, depending on the angles, very, very gently. So that's a nice little touch as well. Legibility again, black backdrop with the bright, bold hour markers, bold hands, the date wheel as well. Legibility is uh, top notch, really. I like the style of the hands as well. You know, they're not your boring, same old, same old kind of hands, handsets that you see so often, you know, like a Mercedes set. They're sword shaped, but slightly unusual because they have a cross section between them as well. Uh, and I do like the orange 
uh, border around the minute hand as well. So that really makes that stand out, it provides a splash of color as well. That matches up with the Octomarine print work at the bottom half uh, too. So that's a nice little uh, touch of color. So just moving on to the logo, which is probably my one and only issue with this watch. Uh, it's one of those kind of thin applied logos, almost like a sticker. And they always end up looking a bit cheap and can often cheapen the overall look of a watch. And unfortunately, that is the case with this. It doesn't cheapen the overall look of the watch in this instance. However, when you look closely at the logo, you do feel a little bit disappointed. You know, you think, oh, okay, well, that's a bit lame. It's a shame to see it because in my eyes, I think if they just opted for just a plain printed logo, it would have looked a lot better. And in actual fact, that probably would have ended up being cheaper for them. It just would have stopped this thin applied logo being utilized. And I think it just would have made everything look a little bit more classy. Um, just a simple printed job, I think would have looked a lot better. However, it's not the kind of thing that should stop you from buying this watch. It's just literally the only thing I can think of uh, that uh, I'm a little bit disappointed with. Finally then, the date, we, uh, date window at three is bordered by a neat brushed border, uh, matches the finishing of the hands and the hour markers. You know, some might complain, oh, the date window, uh, the date wheel, sorry, isn't color matched with the dial. But I think in the interest of legibility, a white date wheel stands out more and it's easy to read. And I think it just matches the rest of the, the watch perfectly fine and uh, works well. Okay, moving on to the bracelet. So it is literally as chunky as uh, the case. However, it is very well balanced um, and it just gives you the, the overall impression of solid and dependable build quality. So let me just pop it on. Now each link, as you can see, is made up of five individual links. Resizing it wasn't too bad, but it's good to note that um, within these two links here, link number four and link number two, um, they're two small collars. So when you push the pin through, these collars end up being a bit loose until you put your new link in place. Just be careful you don't lose them, uh, basically. The links themselves are, are actually quite short and when you couple them with the four minor adjustment points on the clasp, you can get a really, really nice, comfortable fit. Just like the case, the bracelet is completely brushed. So again, that's great for longevity. And I just love the way that there are so many links to it, just provide a, a wonderful array of um, reflections, just looks so impressively made and it is impressively made as well. Just touching on the single locking clasp, so we double locking clasp, sorry, so it clicks once, and then we have the top flap clicking twice. And you can see here we have the Aldaz logo uh, deeply engraved on that top section there. So yeah, as you can see, really fat links, uh, but uh, because because they are so fat, they balance the sheer giganticness of the, um, of the watch head out nicely. So there we have the bracelet. So just briefly touching on the uh, movement. Now I'm sure that it must be like 90% of watches I review uh, have the Seiko NH35 within. It is absolutely everywhere, especially in micro brands uh, and the affordable micro brand market, but with good reason. It's cheap, it's easy to source, it's reliable as well. Uh, so just some of the specs, it has a low beat rate of 21.6 thousand beats per hour. So that's six ticks per second, has a hacking seconds hand, hand winding, automatic winding as well. Um, in terms of how it looks, it's very industrial, not much to look at, but obviously, thankfully it's behind a, a solid case back in this instance. Right, time to have some fun with the macro lens. So as you can see, as we're looking at the dial, uh, we can see the logo there, the Aldaz applied logo. Again, it just looks a tiny bit cheap, really, in comparison to the rest of the watch. You can see here the depth of the hour markers as well. Uh, we can also see a little glimmer of blue flash of the anti-reflective coating on the uh, move, uh, on the sapphire crystal as well. Just checking out our date wheel there, so you can see our nice little applied border. Again, nice little touch of um, close attention to detail on that. And then we have our hands, again, our brushed finishing as well. Everything is brushed, which I do like to see. And our nice orange splash of color there. And at the bottom half, we have Octomarine. Again, splash of color there. 
Moving on to the case then and starting off with the bezel, here's our ceramic insert and if we can get these markings in focus, you see they're nice, clean and crisp markings. Remarkable build quality really. And here we have our nice notched grip on the bezel. As we move on to the case itself, you know, nothing too extravagant with the case. It's just solid and dependable. You know, they've marketed this as a hardcore tool watch for not a lot of money. And this is indeed what it is, is our helium release valve. Moving it over, there's our crown with the Aldaz logo, nicely uh, engraved on the end there. And our big fat chunky rubber grip. That is such a joy to use, let me tell you. Flipping it over, we then have another joyful thing about this watch, and that is this absolute delight of an uh, octopus. You can see just how deep and detailed it is. For a watch costing 230 quid, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And then we have these uh, bits of information surrounding the outside as well. So, you know, so far so good. And then f uh, just moving on to the bracelet, you can see our five links there. Nice, uh, dependable, solid brushed uh, finishing on that. And if we look at the side profile, you can see how big and chunky they are as well. And then if I just close up the buckle, there's our top bar with Aldaz engraved nice and deeply. So yeah, overall, pretty impressive build quality for the for the price of this watch. So what's my conclusion? So what's my conclusion uh, about the Audaz Octomarine? Well, I honestly think it is pretty hard to beat at 230 pounds. The build quality on this thing and the, the list of specs is just outstanding. Uh, you know, I can't fault it. The Literally the only thing I've been able to find is the uh, applied logo. Um, you know, that's probably down to personal preference. If they had only just printed it, you know, this watch would be near on perfect. The height is an issue, 16 mil height. You can't go wrong. You know, the 16 mil height definitely is an issue as well, to be honest. Um, it's not the kind of watch that you'll be able to wear all day, every day in any uh, situation, like a Submariner, for instance. So you are limited there. However, you know, Come on, it's 230 quid or just under $300. 500 meters water resistance or 50 atmospheres, a decent Seiko NH35 movement as well. Two year warranty, don't forget as well. Just the general chunkiness, the fit and finish, the build quality of this watch is just absolutely top notch. And I haven't been able to find any flaw or fault with it in terms of, uh, of actual uh, build quality. So I've been absolutely dead chuffed, really impressed with this watch. And um, yeah, I'd highly recommend it for that price. Can't go wrong. So this was the Aldaz Octomarine. Thank you so much for watching, guys. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and also comment your thoughts below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.